Now, the third item here is then you multiply that by this thing called a tax rate. Oops. I thought I could move all of them. You multiply that by a tax rate. Here's where the fun gets started. This is the statutory part. This is what the state of Indiana has declared. In Indiana, if you remember, residential real estate is taxed at 1%. That's the state law. That's the statutory part in our tree. All right? The tax rate is expressed in the term of a mill. And a mill is one one thousandth of a dollar. If you remember your math, tens, hundreds, thousands. So it's zero point zero one. That is a mill. So if I gave you an example of 40 mills, that is zero point zero. Four zero. See the 40? There it is. What does 0 0.04 look like to you? This is the same thing as 4%, right? 0 0.04, 4 out of 100, that's 4%. I just told you Indiana state law says our tax rate is 1% percent technically in the statutory rule that you read it says our tax rate is actually 10 mils 10 mils 10 mils 0 0.010 that's 10 mils which is equivalent to one percent all right Cool. All right, then. You guys are up for some math today. I can see it in your eyes. So, we'll do, do. Let me give you an example. This, my friends, is also a very common question to you. <coughs> If you have a house that's assessed at $125,000, that's the assessed value. All right, assessed value. It has an equalization factor of 0 0.8. That's wrong. Forget that. It has an equalization factor of 0 0.8. That's what I said. I wrote something different. This is the equalization factor. And the state tax rate is 125 mils. So my common question to you guys is this. Your client comes to you and says, hey, how much is my monthly taxes so I can add it to my loan bill? So my question to you is, on this property, what are the monthly taxes for your client? Take a minute. What are the monthly taxes on this property? $1,041.67. And, uh, and so we have an answer of 
Maybe we have an answer. $41 and something cents. Answer A, do we have anybody else with a different answer? Do we have anybody with the same answer? Cameron got it, Gunjin got it. Jamon, wake up, dude. I see you sleeping. I'm just kidding. Christina, you're the new sheriff in town. What do you got? Did you ask for the monthly or the yearly? Ta-da. Because the monthly would be one well, one nineteen seventy nine, right? Oh, new number. One nineteen seventy nine. Maybe. <laughs> Well, the answer is $1,041.67. And I applaud you guys because that was a trick question that I tried to get you on because that's what the state's going to do. I told you that the assessed value or the um, ad valorem tax is an annual basis. I asked you for the monthly tax. So when you multiply, let me go back over here. When you multiply these together, you get 125,000, 125,000 times 0.8, and then 125 mils is 0 0.125. You end up with like $12,500. But that is the annual tax. I ask for the monthly. Take that number and you divide it by 12. You get that number there. Very good. That's a trick question that the state loves to pull asking you things like that where it's a monthly number does that number seem high to you a thousand dollars a month in taxes boy it's real high but what makes that number high there's another little tidbit in there that should have clued you out would be like the state you live in the mills are super high the mills are super high i think that's what cameron said as well if you look at 125 mils, that's 12 and a half percent. 12 and a half percent. And I told you the state of Indiana is one. So yeah, that number's high. It's just a mathematical number I, I made up. But it will be high because that tax rate <laughs> is exceedingly high at 12 and a half percent. All right. Are we cool with that so far? There's at least one or two of those on the state exam. It's very simple math, literally. It's just three numbers multiplied together. It's getting to those three numbers that's the trick. And the mills is the one that most people miss up. If you literally think about the easy way is take 125 and then divide it by 1,000 because each mill is 1, 1,000. 125 divided by 1,000, you get 0.125. All right. So those are the three chapter or the three factors. You've got the assessed value, which will be given to you. You've got an equalization factor, which will be given to you. And then you've got the mills. Now, let's do one other thing because I want to show you how this works too when it comes to the mills. Because the mills are actually a unitless number. There's no units associated with them. You literally could play the game and add them up. If I told you that the state was 10 mils, that is the state law. Now, anybody else 
and I mean any government entity, can literally pile on that number. Your library in your district could add five mils. Your school needs money. They add two mils. Some unknown thing at seven mils. You literally could just add them up. All right. This becomes 24 mils. So there is no mathematical reasoning. So if I, I could give you an equation, instead of telling you that the tax rate was 10 mils, I could literally say your tax rate is 10 mils for the state, five for the school, two for the library, seven for a new water plant. How much are your taxes? And literally all you have to do is just add these numbers up and take the total. And that's what you would use in that mathematical equation. They literally can just add up. And everybody that gets permission can add, add on to it. For instance, my children live in Southport. Southport recently decided to tax their own selves for the school district because they had to hire more teachers with the Burmese that are coming in. They now hired translators and they had to increase the pay. So uh, uh, Perry Township at the last election had a referendum to add two mills to everybody that lives in Perry Township and it would have just literally, and it passed by the way. So we self-imposed a tax of two mills for our schools in Perry Township, <clears throat> just add it on. So you might be living somewhere else paying 10 mills in Perry Township, they're paying 10 plus two, they're paying 12 mills. And that's why it's specific. Yours has nothing to do with mine. All right, so you literally can just add them up to create that tax bill. Add those together, right? Now, how they get enforced, those get placed as a lien on your property. But remember, we talked about some liens are so important they don't get recorded. And I told you at the time, taxes were one of them. So these do not get recorded down at the recorder's office because they're kept by the tax assessor. So everybody has taxes, all right? So when you go to clear or close your property, the title searcher will go down to the recorder's office, do all the recordings of searching of the recordings, and then stop by the assessor's office and pick up the tax bill because it's not recorded so if you fail to pay your taxes, they will eventually take you to a tax lien sale. And we've touched on this once before, and I told you we talk about it. That tax sale has a date. Prior to the date of that tax sale, you actually can walk in and pay your equitable right of redemption. How much taxes do I owe? Well, you owe Raymond, well, Raymond, you owe eight grand. Okay, here's my eight grand. Take me out of the tax lien sale. I had to pay the equitable, what is fair, or the money I owed to take me out of the sale. That is called the equitable right of redemption. And then after the tax sale, I have the statutory right of redemption for 365 days. It is a state law that says I can come back in up to 365 days after the tax lien sale and redeem, buy back, however you want to look at the word, my property for what I owed on it 
plus some penalty. I have to pay, pay the penalty and reclaim my house back. That is a law that says we can do it. Hence the word statutory right of redemption. Now, remember, I'm gonna change colors here real quick. We talked about earlier, there is a sheriff sale called foreclosure. We have the equitable right of redemption up until the foreclosure. And there was a state law called the statutory right of redemption. And I told you at that time, Indiana does not practice that one. We do practice the statutory right of redemption for taxes. It's the same law that allows us to take the property out of the sale. It's called the equitable right of redemption for both of them. I can go in and take me out of the sheriff sale, i.e. the foreclosure, by paying what I owe. That's what's fair. That's the equitable. After the sale, there is a law saying I can redeem my property. Indiana does not practice it for foreclosure, but we do for tax liens.